Bada bing, bada bing. Welcome to this week's episode of Baking a Mystery, Baking a Murder. It's freaking midnight in New York City, and I haven't been up this late in like a week. <laughs> so with that being said, it's going to be a little bit unhinged today. Do you guys remember? Do you think that you remember your memories accurately? Be no. honest. No, I can't remember anything. Whenever we fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I actually remember all of our fights, every single one, and that's pretty much today's episode of Bacon a Mystery. I'm going to tell you guys each one in chronological, sequential order, and uh, the mystery is who kills who at the end. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, okay? But chances are you're probably not remembering things correctly. Listen, this is not an ad, but most eyewitness statements are considered shaky at best. After some time has passed, and even if it's recent, there's so many biases that could make us believe that we saw one thing when in reality, we saw something else. And none of this is intentional, none of it is malicious. Human memories are just not accurate. We also remember events to be so much worse than it actually was. Well, most of us, anyway. Like when that gate agent tells you to have a safe flight. And you say, you too. She did not smirk. She did not roll her eyes. She did not terrorize your soul, okay? You're overthinking it. This is why the grain is the new biggest thing. It has been life-changing in reportings of crimes. Forget CCTV footage. Forget eyewitness testimonies. Grain is a chip that is the size of a grain of rice. It gets implanted behind your ear, and it starts recording everything through your own very eyes. It stores every second that you are awake. It stores your memories and you can even play it for another person. Oh yeah, you can record it, play it back, watch it. You can even show others the memories and say, see, I told you I wasn't the one that did that. That was you. You were the one that said, you can even zoom in while you're rewatching it. You can alter speeds while you're replaying your memories. You can use it to prove that you weren't the one that stole money from the company, or you can even watch your baby's grain memories to make sure the babysitter wasn't pinching them while you were gone. You can't really lie, steal, cheat, or murder anymore because they can just pull your memories at the police station. And side note, this is so fascinating. But in this world, do you know where married people start cheating? Where? Yeah, where? Like, how would a married person cheat and get away with it when their husband or wife can come home and say, show me your grain all day? Where do they cheat? In their yes. dreams. In their dreams. <laughs> in your <laughs> dreams, bitch. Because <laughs> I'm never leading you out of my sight. <laughs> oh, so no. they can still cheat and get away with it? And it's it? very practical. It's not like only the rich can go. It's not like only government officials can go. It's not like only grain officials can go. It's anyone, most people can go. Cover their eyes in a dark room. <laughs> no, Pitch but black. there's still noise that's recorded. Oh, like a really loud dark room. Like a really loud. <laughs> nightclub i don't know I'm like babe why are you in a room full of walruses today <laughs> in the dark Wait. think about it it's gonna bother you it's gonna bother me yeah yes. do you want to think about it or do i you... kind of want to think about it okay so you want me to move on while you think about yes. it <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay so <laughs> it's very practical it's a place that you've been many many a times in your life and i can cheat there <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay anyone can cheat there Anyone can It's like a loophole. Nothing gets recorded or? Yes, nothing gets recorded in there. Bathroom. No. Oh. Nope. It records bathroom too? Yeah, it records the bathroom Damn. too. Airplane, airplane. <laughs> no. Why would it start recording in the airplane? <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> it's like a new age law. And I deal with this law all the time. Copyright laws. So where would it stop recording? When it's copyrighted music? In a movie theater. Because it's copyright, so your grain is not going to record it in a movie theater. That is so weird. Really? Yes! Because then you could just go home, play it back, and share it with other people. So if I watch a movie, mm -hmm. I forget about it? No, your memory is still your memory, but you don't have a recording oh, of it. Oh, I see. So you can't show people. Oh, Man, I would never guess that. What the really? Heck? I thought you would have totally... Guessed. How would I guess that? <laughs> what? Okay, so let's head into the story. We're talking about since Black Mirror Season 6 has hit Netflix. I just want to say we watched Season 6, Episode 1, and 
Joan is awful is good, but it wasn't it wasn't a mind f- I don't know why. I think it was very much like, oh, I get it. It's a play on like, we need to read terms and conditions and we don't. And like, oh my gosh, all these internet safety rules and we don't. And guess what? We're going to continue not to do it. But it just wasn't like, it didn't make me think all of these thoughts while I was laying in bed. And I wanted to take it back to one of my favorite Black Mirror episodes, which is season one, episode three, the entire history of you. And the whole premise of this episode is that there's this new technology of a grain implanted behind your ear that can record all of your memories through your eyes. And they've scaled this down to a domestic situation. So let me introduce you to Liam Foxwell, the man of the hour, okay? He's young, ambitious. He's an attorney that's struggling to make a name for himself. It sounds very cliche, but he's, um, he's mediocre at his job. Now, the only problem is he's like a nobody in the corporate world. It's just all numbers. So he's practically shitting himself when he's asked to come to the HQ, fly to the headquarters to meet with three of his bosses in this glass down conference room and have his annual review. They sit him down. The suit sit him down. So here's what we think, Liam. We think that you and your team could be good at litigation and retrospective parenting cases. It's an area that we've been picking up. We've been getting a lot of cases regarding it. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I'm not exactly quite sure what exactly. Let's say Bobby grows up, can't get a job. He can sue mom and dad for insufficient attention, leading to lack of confidence, lack of socialization, leading to damages against earnings, yada, yada, yada. <sighs> oh, uh, what exactly is the firm's ethical and moral standing on this? What do you mean? What is our moral stand? Are, are you are you not okay with doing that? I mean, I'm totally fine with it. Sue him for every for every penny they got. I mean, very good. Let's sue them. Sue mom. Sue dad. Okay. All right, Liam. Well, good to know. Look, we really hope to look forward to seeing you again. So, uh, you're free to go. Liam awkwardly smiles. Like, does this mean he's fired? Does this mean he's on thin ice? Like, what the hell was that? What does it mean? We hope to look forward to seeing you again. What does that even mean? All these things are clouding his mind as he rushes outside the HQ doors, hails a cab from the massive office, which, side note, everyone pays using a single chip that looks like this futuristic USB. This is your wallet, but it's also like a small little remote control, and you click it, and it's your phone but only your eyes can see it because remember how the grain is attached to your eyes so you start clicking around in it and it looks like there's a hologram in front of you but only your eyes can see it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so he pops into his hologram and um in the future an ad plays when you open your phone (laughs) so he's getting an ad first thing he opens his hologram and this is literally like the apple vr headset and he's got to watch ads for the new grain add-ons where this is wild, but you know how your phone storage runs out? Mm-hmm. Well, your grain storage runs out, so you got to buy grain cloud, mm-hmm. cloud storage for your grain. And they're like nine ninety nine for three decades worth of storage. So he's watching this ad. So he's getting through it. And uh, as he's rushing to the airport in this taxi, he's like, I know I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't. He debates it for a split second. So think about it. If you had an embarrassing moment, Would you replay it over and over and over again? Or would you just never look at it again? I would delete it. What the hell? You would delete it so you never look at it? Yeah, because what does that do for me? Nothing. You're so logical. I can't. I would have to watch it nonstop. No, you would not. I would. I think about my embarrassing moments nonstop. I lay in bed and I think about it at night. Well, then I will force you to delete it. (laughs) You would go into my grain and delete the footage? Yeah. Oh my God, you little gaslighter. <laughs> Plan some fake memories. <laughs> okay, so he knows he shouldn't. He even debates it for a split second, but he's gotta. He's gotta relive the meeting, okay? He felt like it was bad. His job is on the line. They hated him, right? They hated him. Yeah, they did, right? 
So he rewatches it, just straight up hate watching himself, stumbling in the meeting over and over again. And he analyzes each of their faces twice, three times. Each time he's getting more and more panicked. You literally see the anxiety rising inside of his soul. Now, at the airport, to get through TSA, you have to show them your memories. They ask for a couple of weeks in advance. So they're like, okay, show me a month. Then you give them your memories and it pops up on the TSA screen. And what they do is they do face recognition on every single memory that you have. And it runs all of those faces. So if you met up with a criminal, it'll know. Wow. And you can't leave the city. And if you delete a memory, there's a black space in your memory. So they know something has been deleted. Okay. Is that not okay? Is that no. illegal? I mean, it's going to make your life harder to get through TSA probably. Wow. So I guess you can't delete it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So at the airport, they're going through his memory. Sometimes they ask for like 64 weeks in the past and you just have to give it to them. What's privacy, right? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing is privacy. Who cares about privacy? Who are you seeing anyway? Okay, whose face is it going to recognize? I need to know. <laughs> so Liam gets into the airport. He checks in. And basically, he's just heading back home to be with his wife. He didn't know that he was going to make it in today. He genuinely thought that he was going to be in town for a while because his evaluation was going to take a long time. But it was two minutes. And he's just so anxious. He texts his wife who says she's at Lucy's house, which is like a friend of hers. So he decides he's just going to stop by instead of going home. Don't tell me she's cheating. Come on now. So he decides he's going to stop by, which side note, he actually has to search through his memories to find out one of the names of the friends there <gasps> because he forgot their names. So he's like, OK, I met them at the barbecue. So he starts going through his memories and he's like, oh, hi, I'm Kevin. He's like, okay, who's Kevin? Kevin? Kevin. It's just a random friend of his wife's, like an old, old friend. Right. So he knocks on Lucy's door and the whole gang is there, like all of his wife's friends from like the olden days before she even married him. By the way, his wife's name is Fee. So, you know, Lucy opens the door. Liam, where's Fee been hiding you? We didn't think you'd be able to make it. Yeah, well, I made sure to catch an early flight out. So as Lucy is leading him through the house, she's like, beer? Oh, um, sure, thanks. And she's like, you know, the others are in the living room. I'm going to join you guys in a second. Here, here, take the beer. Liam nods and he starts making his way quietly into the living room of this modern house. I mean, it's got floor to ceiling windows everywhere. And as he turns the corner to the living room, he sees his wife and a man named Jonas not cheating and not even getting cozy, but they're like kind of in a corner talking and the body language, like the way that they're talking to each other, it just kind of piques his interest. They seem very absorbed in each other's worlds, very absorbed in each other's words, just very into each other but not like making out not flirting and touching each other it was just weird it made liam a little bit uneasy and then his wife glances over and the expression on her face is isn't shock it's not like she just got caught cheating it's not upset that he's here it's just just something that looks like she's like a little disappointed to see him here <sighs> babe you're here yeah, I uh, caught an early flight back, so <laughs> they do an awkward kiss on the cheek. So how is the evaluation? We can talk about it later. Where's Jody? Oh, at home with Gina, the babysitter. Cool. The man that Fee was just talking to walks up, and she introduces him kind of awkwardly. Oh, um, Jonas, this is, uh, this is Liam. Nice to meet you. I'm Jonas. Really nice to meet you. It's just very awkward. Like the whole vibes are awkward. And uh, Liam, you remember our friend Jeff, Lucy's uh, husband? So Jeff, the homeowner, jokes about how Fee is being very mean to him tonight because she's not impressed by his new fridge. And Liam's just trying to join into the crowd that he doesn't belong in. So like Liam is the outsider. This is his wife's friends. So he's like, oh, yeah, Jeff. Well, she's like that. And Jonas looks over and says, yeah, well, tell me about it. Oh, and whoa, takes whoa, a whoa, sip whoa, of his whoa. beer my guy yeah so <laughs> <Who> are you <laughs> very weird energy like what would you do if some dude said that about me 
<laughs> yeah, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> it's very weird. Jonas is acting like he knows his wife intimately. Like, what is going on? So the rest of the party come to join them in the living room, and we find out that Jeff, the guy, the homeowner, is freaking obsessed with rewatching his memories. Like, this man will throw a memory on the TV to show you how good the hotel food was, or how a new carpet that he just bought was a little frayed on the edges when he just brought it home. He's like, see, I just brought it in. I didn't even trip on it. Look at how frayed that edge is. <laughs> I'm on my Mandarin hype right now, and even my Korean hype. Ever since I got back from Korea, I realized how bad my Korean has gotten, and I'm like, no, I do not want to have kids one day, and they don't know any Korean because I never use it with them. And you cannot convince me right now that learning languages is not hot people stuff. It is. It's hot people energy. I think when people are learning languages, it just gives off this powerful intellectual aura about them. So I've been trying to learn Mandarin, brush up on my Korean all through Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone, it, literally how I love you, Rosetta Stone. They are the expert in language learning for the past 30 years. They have this award-winning app where you can learn anytime, anywhere. And here's my absolute favorite thing about Rosetta Stone. Everything I learn on Rosetta Stone is usable like right away. It's not a bunch of random phrases that I will probably never use. It is so practical. It is so satisfying. I can do these bite-sized lessons like 10 minutes. So whether I'm on the train in New York City or waiting at my gate at the airport, it is the perfect perfect time. It doesn't even feel like I'm learning a new language. It's so fun. There's no tedious memorization. It's focused on speaking practice and punctuation. And my fiance says I sound like a local, if that makes sense. Okay, like not my pronunciation is not perfect yet, but the grammar, the structure, the casual tones of the conversation. He says it doesn't sound like I just read it off an outdated Mandarin textbook. And I know that a lot of you guys are learning Korean right now. Rosetta Stone has Korean, Chinese, Japanese, French, Spanish, Arabic, Italian, Polish, They've got 25 languages. So be even hotter this summer by learning a new language. Side note, learning a new language also helps keep your brain sharp. So that's great. So for a limited time, our listeners can get Rosetta Stone's Lifetime Unlimited subscription, which gives you access to all 25 of their languages forever for 40% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash baking today. Rosetta Stone, how language is learned. <music> So they sit around and they start talking about Liam's evaluation and you can tell that Fee is not comfortable with how much Liam is sharing. Like I think she just wants to have this united presentable front in front of everyone but Liam is a bit too honest and a little bit too relatable. So uh, Lucy is like, oh, the assessment, how did it go? Uh, the evaluation went good. <laughs> well, it was kind of a disaster but you know, I don't, I don't know. Jeff perks up. Well, let's have a look. We can evaluate uh, your evaluation. Come on, man. Yeah, Liam and V are both objecting, but Lucy is laughing and she's clapping. Oh my god, it'll be so fun. We can, we can vote. Jeff is chiming in, all excited. And I work in recruitment, actually, so it could be useful for your next one. You know, going forward. Ooh, we could grade him. Everyone, come. We're gonna grade his evaluation. So everyone's giggling, everyone's gathering in the living room and pressuring a clearly uncomfortable Liam to throw his memories onto the TV. But Jonas steps in and he's the savior of the day. Guys, just drop it, shall we? Liam clearly doesn't want to be evaluated. And I think it's a bit much, don't you guys? Come on, let's go eat. But even then, something about the way Jonas says it, it's almost as if he's like, Come on, I'm a man, Liam. You're not a man. So I'm gonna I'm gonna protect you. Do you know what I'm saying? So as they walk into the dining room, Liam pulls Fee to the side and he asks, have I ever met Jonas before? He looks so familiar. Yeah, he's uh, one of the old crowd. I think I told you already. You okay? Is it the evaluation? If you're not in the mood, we can go home. No, no, it's fine. I'm fine. Hmm. <laughs> Sophie smiles, kisses him on the lips, and walks off. Meanwhile, he excuses himself to go to the restroom, and he quickly replays the moment he first walked into the living room and sees his wife's face. He pauses the memory, zooms in, and she looks disappointed. Just like a slight twinge of disappointment. And it's there. He can even slow it down, zoom in, overanalyze it. And this is the memory he has before he sits down for dinner. And uh, Jonas is asked about his nasty breakup. And the guy is very outgoing compared to Liam. He's talking about how he knew his last relationship was over because they were spending so much money on the f***ing wedding. 
<laughs> I'm serious. And he's telling the whole crowd who's all kind of laughing and smiling. No, I'm serious. The less you care about someone, the more you want to spend on the wedding. Who cares about the thickness of the wedding invitation? We did. You want to know why? Because he gave us something to talk about. That's when I knew it was over. So that's what it is. Now, in the middle of this very awkward dinner, there is a knock on the door and one of the friends, Halam, walks in and she's introduced to a few of the new faces and she sits down. Fee, the wife, leans over and she says, Jonas was just explaining to us how relationships are a scam. Look, it, it's like going to a theater, you know? You waste your entire fucking night. You spend some money. So when someone asks you, how was the theater? You say, oh, yeah, yeah, it was good. It was great. It was fun. But the thing is, the more you pay, the more longer it goes on, the more time you spend, the more you're like, yeah, no, we love the theater. We love being together. We love not fucking anybody else and just sharing our thoughts with just one another for the rest of our lives. We love it. Finally, someone gets a little bit serious. Her name is Colleen. And she says, well, would you say you loved her, though? I just think... We just really fancied each other, you know? And that's all it really was. You know how it is early on. We were just tools in the tool shed that just fit together really fucking well. And I mean, near the end, I would just be like, okay, honey, you go ahead and go upstairs and sleep first. I'm just going to watch some news. And I would find myself watching and re-watching hot times I had in previous relationships. <laughs> Fee laughs and says, easy. Like, I'm just saying... There was a beautiful woman upstairs waiting to have sex with me. And I'm sat downstairs watching redos of some hot times with some hot girl that I pulled from some random bar. I mean, seriously. Everyone starts going from laughing to a bit uncomfortable. I was like, kind of stare around and glance around. He sounds a little unhinged. It's just one of those awkward dinner parties where you're like, mm, it's just an awkward moment. And Jonas catches on. I mean, come on, guys. I'm sure all of us have gone through it. Through old memories, looking for some filth and some fun, no? Okay, would you go through your old memories with an ex? No, I'll delete it. <laughs> Erased. Erased. <laughs> so, Halam, the new girl speaks up. Not me. Very awkward. <laughs> Lucy tries to break the ice and speak up. <clears throat> Halam doesn't have a grain. Everyone's shocked. Nobody believes her. Holy shit. Is that like a political thing no it was gouged out about a year ago jesus christ was it painful total agony but on the plus side i guess i don't have to replay the memory so clearly jonas comes over to touch the scar behind her ear and he's just like softly caressing her neck and her scar he's like very <laughs> strong boy vibes and he's like yeah well it feels quite nice and clearly no brain damage and everyone laughs yeah, thankfully my eyesight wasn't affected because, you know, improper discharge of the grain can lead to blindness. It's connected to the eye nerves. So who took it then? Stolen to order. Probably some millionaire perv. This is a new type of trafficking in this world. So because when you want to see all the shots, like if she's ever looked into a mirror unclothed, any inappropriate moment that she's had, it's all stored in her grain. It's all there for someone else to steal and watch. It's like ultimate voyeurism. And now if there's a market. People will start selling it. It's a new kind of trafficking. So a lot of typically women will find themselves getting their grain gouged out from behind their ear. Okay. To be sold to the highest bidder. You can't like erase that through the cloud or so something? These days, there's new services where you can encrypt the memories. Okay. Yeah. It's like a whole thing. Okay. <sighs> Anyways, Halam says, I didn't have one for a few days after the incident. And I just, just kind of liked it. So I never got a new one. Jonas says, that's cool. That's really cool. Because, you know, that's like a new thing, right? Going grainless. Like, more people are doing it. One of the more suburban, stuck-up ladies, Colleen, goes, I heard it's huge with strippers. And sex workers, I mean. No offense. It's okay. <laughs> sure, I mean, it's pretty boring, though, because I'm just one man at a time. The others try to make it a bit more casual because there's some tension going on between this little stuck-up woman and Halam. And Lucy says, you know, I think it's cool that you're going grainless. 
and Colleen's fucking forehead vein is just bulging out. Sorry, but I, I just could never do it. <laughs> Go grainless. You know half the organic memories that you have aren't even accurate? Lucy smiles and leans over to Halam. C Colleen works in grain development. Look, half the population can implant false memories just by asking leading questions in therapy. You can make people remember getting lost in shopping malls that they've never even visited before, or even getting abused by a pedophile babysitter that they've never even had. The whole table does a round of polite smiles and awkward stares. And Halam very confidently just looks Colleen in the eye and says, It's not a big deal. I'm just happier now. So on the way home, Liam plays Fee the memory of the evaluation. And Fee says, Honey, they look forward to seeing you again. That's good. No, he said he hopes to look forward to seeing me again. He replays it for her. Listen, it's all phony. The suits are phony. Hang on, honey. Replay that and zoom in on the woman. Look at her paper. Look at what she's writing. It's a check next to your name. She's checking you. Pass. Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, or it could be the beginning of a swastika. Okay, they're such pricks. It's probably that, okay? Anyway, did you have fun with your old crew? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I did. You speak to that Jonas much? No, not really. Bit of a dick, isn't he? Getting off on his own holier-than-thou relationship theories. Oh, saving little old me from those f***ing assholes. Come on, guys, this isn't cool. Let's not look at his evaluation. What? You don't like him? Then why are you inviting him over? They look behind, and there's Jonas in the car just driving. What the f***? I didn't say I didn't like him. I like him. What? So he's coming over, we find out that he's coming over literally right now. And besides, babe, you wanted me to invite him. I did not want you to invite him. What are you talking about? She gets her little remote and she replays the memory. She's saying, you were the one that asked him to come over for a nightcap. No, I only asked him that because you were laughing at every little thing that he was saying during dinner. What are you talking about? You literally invited him over tonight. Well, it's obvious that you wanted him to come, Fee. What are you saying? You're insane. If you don't want him here, then just uninvite him. So as they're fighting, Fee replays the memory where Jonas and the two of them are standing outside. And Fee says, well, it's kind of early to call it a night, but uh, good night. And Jonas says, well, why don't we head to the local pub and grab another drink? Liam declines and says he's got to go save their daughter from the pedo babysitter, like Colleen says. And they all laugh, and Liam invites him over for a nightcap. He's like, why don't you come over instead for a drink? See? You invited him, honey. I didn't invite him. You invited him. Well, it was very obvious that I didn't want him to come. I was just being polite. Fucking moron. Well, then just uninvite him. So like this, they argue the whole way home. They pull up to their house and Jonas parks outside and gets out. And both of them are just standing there. And Liam says, hey, uh, actually, what time is it? Midnight? Oh, man. Time goes on. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of how time works. It's been 15 minutes. Well, uh, yeah, we, we, we've got to go inside because the babysitter... So is that new information? Because you mentioned you got to let the babysitter go. No, it's just that we thought, right, Fee? We thought, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Turns out we're just tired. We forgot. But now we remembered we're tired. So sorry, Jonas. It's fine. I mean, I got a backup plan. So I guess I'll see you later, Fee. And uh, good to meet you, man. Good to meet you. So as they're awkwardly saying bye, Liam is very awkwardly putting his arms around Fee, kissing her on the head, acting overly polite. It's just a very tense moment. Like, it's giving a fight of the masculine energies. That's the vibe, okay? When the couple get inside, turns out they're rich too. Their house is like super modern. Think LA modern bachelor pad. 
They offered Gina the babysitter to sleep in the guest room because a cab is going to take 40 minutes to get there. So Gina goes up to sleep. Meanwhile, the couple sit down and they watch through the memories of the baby to make sure, I don't know, that Gina's not pinching the baby behind the scenes. Liam's not even interested, okay? He's sitting there and he's trying so hard to act casual, but it's freaking bothering the shit out of him. So that Jonas guy, is he a big part of the gang or what's going on? I don't know, I, I guess. Let me guess, he spent most of the time hanging out with you guys and oozing around the girls, offering them back rubs, circling for any sort of hole to put it in. Not really. Was he always like that? <sighs> okay, look, Liam, you may have noticed a bit of a weird atmosphere between us because many, many years ago, before I even met you, me and Jonas had a thing. You had a thing for the oily dude man. A little thing. I didn't even know you back then. You slept with him. Oh, Wow. Well, we all have a past. What about you and Gemma? You well, I told you about Gemma. Gemma was a fucking nut job, but you never mentioned Jonas. I did. I told you I hooked up with someone in Marrakesh. Jonas is Mr. Marrakesh? <laughs> it was a stupid hookup. It was like for like a month. I thought Mr. Marrakesh was some, some cool, cool culture. Oh, it, it was years ago. Well, you must be embarrassed, V. Very embarrassed because she says that's embarrassing. If I were you, I'd be embarrassed. V looks offended now. It was years ago. But you dated him for a month? That's what I said. But when you told me about Mr. Marrakesh, you said it was a week. He starts playing the memory of her talking about Mr. Marrakesh. Oh my God. She said he played mind games with her and fucked her in the head. And it was just like a weird week. She said it was a week. So he said, so was it a weird week or was it a weird month? <laughs> oh my God. It doesn't even matter. It's not a big deal. Uh, uh, uh. Well, it's a big enough deal to drive you insane after a week or a month. Fee gets up and she starts pacing the room. Look, you're getting obsessive again. And I don't want to go through the whole thing again like you did with Dan. I mean, no wonder you're so googly-eyed with him. You were laughing at every little thing he said. I mean, what do you do at that point? <sighs> oh my gosh. So what's going on? Is, do you think he's being overly suspicious or she is kind of weird? I would say she's kind of weird. Uh-huh. Yeah, she was kind of weird. So you think his reaction is normal? Yes, but his reaction is a little overblown. Mm. So what's the right way to approach something like this for him? I don't know, but do you think without the grain, this fight would have never happened? It would. But it's hard to be like, no, you said a week. It would just be like, no, I didn't. Yeah, but still, there will be a fight because she's like being weird with this guy. Mm -hmm. I think it's weird. I guess with the grain is better because you can fact check. <laughs> you can fact check. This guy is such a... Right. <laughs> Let's pull the memories. How many? How long is it? <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> anyway, Fee gets upset and she's like, Jonas is just an old fling and it's in the past, so don't get all f***ed up, okay? Oh, I'm all f***ed up. I'm all f***ed up? Well, that's f***ing brilliant because sometimes, Fee, you're a Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Fee plays the part that he says, you're a bitch to him again. Fee, I would like you to erase that. You're a bitch. She's replaying it. <laughs> and, and you can't just edit out this part that I said sometimes. That part is very important and you're just playing the part where I says you're a bitch. I said sometimes. Fee walks off, storms into the room, and Liam finishes his drink before rushing into the room and apologizing to Fee. And she says, look, I love you, Liam. You know that, right? I know. I'm sorry. And the two of them start doing it that night while re-watching old clips of their good old hot steamy days. But in real life, they're just going through the motions. Like, it's really depressing. Oh, they're looking at their younger selves? Yeah. Each other? Yeah. From like when their relationship was very passionate and steamy and they're just re-watching that. That's so weird. While they're doing it and this time they're doing it with like no emotion 
it just seems very i mean the whole thing feels like what everyone tells you marriage is going to be like but trust me it's not okay well i guess i wouldn't know but it's been like 10 years but don't let the narrative fool you but they're like just not even into it just watching after they do it, Fee goes to sleep and Liam walks downstairs to drink while replaying clips of Jonas talking during dinner. He rewatches and rewatches until even the fucking sun comes up and he hears a voice. Morning! Oh, Gina! Gina, come here, sit down. Oh, um, Liam starts playing random jokes that Jonas gave during dinner and asks, Do you think that's funny, Gina? Do you think it's funny? No need to be nice, the guy's a total prick. Is the guy funny or not, Gina? <laughs> um I guess not I, I don't know yes you do Gina it's a yes or no is the guy funny or not Gina looks super uncomfortable but he keeps going even when Fee comes downstairs morning what's going on oh just getting Gina's opinion on something and he replays the shitty joke by Jonas in the part that Fee laughs really, really loud. And I was just wondering, because you found it so hilarious, and I didn't find it that funny, so I was just trying to see what Gina thought. Sorry, um, I didn't really want to get involved. Fee side-eyes. Liam, Gina, let me get you a cab. Oh, uh, that's okay. My dad's already on his way. And just one more thing, Gina. Sit down. Look, Gina, we both want him to come back to our house. But who wants him to come back more? He replays the part where Fee says, It's too early to call it a night. Jonas offers to go to the pub. And Liam says, No, we've got to rescue the baby from the pedo babysitter. He pauses it. That's just a joke, Gina. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> <laughs> she looks incredibly uncomfortable. He continues to play the clips. Ignore. But who's more keen on him coming back? Right on time, Gina's dad rings the doorbell. It's her, right? She looked more keen, right? Yeah. Okay. And Fee apologizes while walking her out, and Liam pours himself another glass and starts replaying the dinner party jokes. That joke is just not that funny, Fee. Objectively, anyone would say it's not that funny. Yeah, well, that was f***ing embarrassing. Just now. Liam smirks and he starts playing more clips. Whatever you're loading up right now, just stop it. Sit down. Sit down, V. Just sit for a second. I think he's like so big on let me catch you in the act. Let yes. me grab. The real issue here is your wife is not connecting with you. So instead of worrying about what did you say to him or why are you laughing? Just figure out what's going on between you guys. Yeah. He's all twisted, right? Yeah. So, I mean, this technology could be used for so many goods, but instead he's like, I mean, I guess the show is showing the dark side of this. But you know what this reminds me of? Have you ever had like a cheating ex? Yeah, sure. There's almost this adrenaline and you almost want to catch them because it yeah. proves you're not crazy for some reason. Yeah, sure. You think it's that? I don't know why he's so obsessive. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it just seems like it's not solving the problem. Yeah. You know, it seems a little backward. Mm, like know, it's just making it worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> it's about to get worse. My wedding is coming up and I would be lying to you if I said I don't have preconceived expectations of what I will look like in my dress. I'm just gonna be honest. But as I get older, I am so over restrictive, not nutritious diets, which is why leading up to the wedding, I am just keeping my regular eating habits. I'm eating Factor. Factor is a lifesaver during wedding planning. Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal kit. Factor fuels you up with flavorful, nutritious, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. My friend Patricia is super picky with food. I even got her on factor because it really is that good you save time you eat well you stay on track of your goals and factors meals are fresh never frozen and are ready to eat in just two minutes so all you have to do is heat it up and enjoy save time to do things that you want to be doing during summer they even have calorie conscious options which are dietitian approved and have been keeping me really just satiated throughout the day but the magic the magic is really in their protein plus meals i love that when i pack up with protein i look leaner but i also feel fuller for longer the protein plus meals have 30 grams of protein or more per serving and it's not like a fitness meal kit okay it's so freaking delicious factor even has surf and turf options like 
Are you kidding me? They've got roasted garlic filet mignon, Cajun spiced shrimp, and salmon. They've got so many weekly menu options to choose from, like 34 plus a week that are chef prepared, dietitian approved. They can fit any lifestyle and goal. You can even add breakfast options like bacon and cheddar egg bites. These are really good. They're yummier than you know, the coffee shop that will not be named. These are superior. You can even get smoothies, shakes, cold pressed juices. Oh, and it's cheaper than takeout and so much faster than restaurant delivery. So head to factormeals.com slash baking50 and use code baking50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code baking50 at factormeals.com slash baking50 to get 50% off your first box. So he plays the part that he shows up to the party and Felix disappointed. Spot the difference. Oh my God. What difference, Liam? You're drunk. Just stop. Look. Look at the way you look at him. He's the greatest guy in the world. And then I arrive and you clam up. Here, we can replay it if you want. We're just talking, Liam. Oh, and when I arrive, your body language is stiff. Your gauges are all over the place. You don't even know how to stand around him and around us. Liam, this is just so stupid. Please. But you can't hide it. Not completely. See how you look at him. So he starts playing the footage where Fee is looking at Jonas while he's talking during the dinner party. And she's kind of looking at him like very pleasantly and, you know, like this. And then she glances over at Liam and her face is not frowning, but just like a little. like It's kind of the vibe. Like she's looking at him googly eyed and then all of a sudden like. That's the vibe. Look at yourself. Look at the way you look at him and look at the way that you look at me. And then she's like, yeah, well, how am I looking at you now, huh? Just tell me, how long did you go out with Jonas for? Oh my God, does it even matter? Liam keeps finding discrepancies in Fee's story about dating Mr. Marrakesh, so she fesses up and says that she dated Jonas for six months instead of just one. So Liam freaks out. Ooh. Oh, So not a week or a month, but six months. The ever-inflating romance. You're probably still going out with him, as far as I know. (laughs) Why am I on trial here? Well, what's been going on, V? Nothing. Nothing has been going on. It, It, Christ, it was, you know, like when we first met, you get with someone and previous boyfriends come up. So, yeah, I downplayed it to you and I said a week instead of six months, okay? So you lied. Not everything that isn't true is a lie, Liam. Hello? Are you crazy? Okay, fine. I lied. It was a bigger thing than I made it out to be. And yeah, he's sort of a fucking dick. But I liked him, okay? But I don't like him now. Not like that. So to get this clear, he fucks you, gets footage for his little library of videos, and you still want to be his friend. Oh my god, Liam, this is so pathetic. Because he probably jerks off to what you guys did. Oh my god, ew, sober up. Make yourself puke, whatever, I don't care, but get yourself together. And Fee storms off while Liam continues to drink and rewatches more clips of them. He notices that every time Jonas talks about rewatching old videos of his past relationships, he keeps glancing at Fee. And remember the one time he said that he was watching old hot clips with old flings? She says, easy. Mm. And just the way she looks at him, she looks at him like she's a little schoolgirl crush. But anytime she looks at Liam, she just looks annoyed. So Liam hops into his car and his grain assistant lets him know that he is too drunk to drive. And if he still drives and overrides this, he will get no personal and accidental insurance. All of it is null and void. But this guy got places to go, okay? He goes to Jonas's house. I don't know how he knows where he lives, but he shows up. They talk through the intercom and Jonas looks like he just woke up. And he's like, is Fee with you? Nah, it's just me. Can you open the gate? Um, sure. Jonas runs down with a half unbuttoned shirt. Hey, uh, what do you want? Liam goes in for a hug. Ah, just want to go inside for a minute. I missed you. He runs up and he's very unhinged. Oh, your place is nice and spectacular. And he walks over to the bar and pours himself another whiskey and starts drinking. Liam, it's not cool for you to invite yourself up like this. And to be honest, it's, it's a bit weird. Nice lamp. Is that uh, from Mary Cash? Liam, do I have to call Fee? Did you guys get into a fight or something like that? Jonas, sit down. Sit down. 
Come on, sit down. It's not a bear trap. It's it's your chair. Do you want me to bounce this fucking whiskey bottle off your fucking head? Oh, sit down. <laughs> I'm just joking, Jonas. Bloody hell. I thought you were supposed to be a cool man. You're supposed to be fucking brilliant. Sit down. So then remember Halam from the dinner party last night? Well, she comes out in Jonas's dress shirt. So, she, you know, she stayed over, right? Ah, oh, figures. Got some good stuff for the good old scrapbook, eh? Neither of them find it funny. I think you should go. I don't blame you. I would have. Jonas, don't be shy. Check it on the screen. Let's have a look at last night. Because Jonas says he likes to watch, you know. And Halam is like, this is so rude. I'm fucking joking, Jonas. You're so uptight. Jesus, have a sense of humor. Anyway, lovely room. Is this where you masturbate to images of my wife? Or do you do that in the bedroom? Liam, I would like you to leave. Come on now. Jonas tries to get him off his couch, but Liam bonks him on the head with the whiskey bottle instead. Okay, like the way he bonks him is like, dong. it's not like a, like a, I'm going to kill you bonk, okay? It's like a bonk. And he's like, ow, oh, what the fuck? So he's screaming and Halam starts screaming at him like, get out of here. But he just bonks him. And then the next thing you know, Liam wakes up in his car in a field and he has positively driven into a tree. Absolutely. No doubt about it. He has no idea what happened. So he replays his memory and yikes, 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 yikes. It's cringe. Liam looks so shocked that he was being so violent. Liam bonks him on the head and Jonas is on the ground clutching his head because it's kind of painful. And Liam starts choking him, threatening him. He's like, I am going to cut you. And he smashes the whiskey bottle and grabs a jagged piece of glass and is like, I'm going to fucking cut you if you don't wipe all the memories of my wife inside your head. Halam is freaking out. She's calling the cops in the background, but they don't do anything because they're like, show us your feed. And then she's like, I don't have a grain. I don't have a feed. Just hurry. There's literally an assault going on. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. So he's like, fucking wipe it or else I will gauge it out myself. And delete it or else I'll crack your skull and wipe you out. So he watches him put it onto the TV so both of them can see him deleting it. And you know how in your iPhone you can actually categorize by pictures? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can categorize by like Fiona, like people. Uh huh, uh huh. So he goes to his Fiona thing and he deletes all of the memories. And Liam screams, Stay away from my wife. So this doesn't mean that he forgets Fiona, uh -huh. he just doesn't have the memories to rewatch. And Liam walks off and crashes the car. Now, after rewatching that, Liam looks so disgusted with himself he goes back home to see fiona asleep and asking him where'd you go then what's going on did you use a condom or not just tell me what liam am i jody's father or not yes of course are you sure about that liam looks up at the painting above the bed i never fucking liked that painting i bought it for you because you loved it i thought it was pretentious as but here's the thing. Remember in his memory, he could see the memories being pulled up on the TV, like little thumbnails? Yeah. One of them shows Jody shirtless in bed with the exact painting in the back. He bought that for her 18 months ago. And soon after, she got pregnant. Wait, what? That means she oh was cheating. God. 18 months ago? Oh yeah. my God. Oh my God. And he says, you know when you suspect something? It's always better when it turns out to be true. It's like I've had a bad tooth for years and I'm finally digging out all the rotten shit. Liam, it's not what it looks like. Oh, did he come around to read you a bedtime story then? It was when all the things, when all the Dan stuff was happening and you walked out, yeah, for like 19 minutes. For five days. You walked out for five days, no call, nothing. Oh. So you fucked him after five days. That's heroic. I mean, after three days, that's good. But five? Wow. You're a savior. I'm sorry, I went out for a drink and I got drunk and I shouldn't have, it shouldn't have happened and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, I can't say anything else and I just feel so shitty. Did you use a condom? Because we didn't have any here since we were trying. He had some. In his pocket? In his car. Was it his decision or did you make him wear one? I made him. And you saw him put him on? Yeah. Show me then. Show me on the TV. Oh my gosh. Show me right now. I need to see it, Fee. I need to see it. I deleted it. I wanted to make it go away. I wiped the whole thing. Did you? So there's just a blank gap in your timeline. Yeah. 
Show me that then. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just have to find it. And she reaches for her remote and she's trying to delete it. So he grabs it and starts playing it on the TV. <sighs> the whole time she... And like, this is wild. Would you even want to see it? Like, you know what's on there. That's what I'm saying. Why like, would you want to see it? Yeah, he's like... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to get out of it. So, I mean, this is just something that you can never go back from once you see it. And she's sobbing on the bed. She won't even look at it. She's covering her ear. She doesn't want to hear it. And um, it it's pretty bad. Like, he's just eyes glued to the TV and just all the noises that are coming out of it, all the vibes. It's a, it's a lot. Yeah. And it doesn't look like they used a condom. Sophie is sobbing in bed and Liam literally cannot stop watching. And then the screen turns black. And we see memories of Liam and Fee during their happy days, smiling, laughing. But now the house is empty. It's devoid of life. The sheets are gone and it feels like Fee left with Jody, their daughter. So they left. And all Liam is left with are just memories. The house is a wreck. It's filled with nothing but alcohol bottles. And he just can't do it. He just keeps watching happy memories of her. All around the house. When things were great. When he used to make her laugh. And she would try on these cute clothes and ask him which one looks cuter. Or like her hugging him while he's brushing his teeth. And he stands in front of a mirror in real time. And he grabs his razor blade. And gouges out his own grain. Mm. And that is the end. Okay, a couple of questions this episode brought up in my head. Do you think you should go looking for trouble? No. Okay. Absolutely and not. Some things are better not to know. Yes. And don't you think it's like, ugh, I have a problem with this, but I th it's good to forget things in relationships. Because like, if you nitpick every single thing that they said yeah. and replay it, Yeah you're gonna have the worst relationship of all time exactly yeah yeah because sometimes i say some dumb shit and if you <laughs> replay that every day you'll be pissed every day i wake up that's my alarm exactly. and i look at you good morning motherfucker yeah. <laughs> it's crazy that people do that yeah and uh my grandma does that oh my gosh yeah she records people's fights, fights unknowingly and then she, yeah and then she replays it to you like, that's some, like, really twisted stuff, you know? Yeah, that's really twisted. It's just like this. Yeah. But she only chooses the worst things to, to record. So that's that's the problem with these memories. What percentage do you think people would replay the bad times versus the good times? Wow. I feel like the advertisement is like, you can replay your good, good times. times. But the truth is... <laughs> it's going to be all the bad times. All the bad times. Yeah. I would hate watch myself. Not even hate, like, I think a lot of, like, fights. Mm. Like, no, you say this, let me play you this. Oh. And they're like, no, you did this, let me play you this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. You gotta have, like, an organization system in your yeah. little phone <laughs> for all of the fights. Yeah, and then there's gonna yeah. be a lot of TikTok hacks. So this is how you use their memories yeah. against themselves. This is how you girl boss gaslight and gatekeep, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and also, do you think that human life is designed for lying? Like sometimes there's compassion in lies, but there is not compassion in the truth. Like she lied that it was in one week and maybe there was some compassion in her lie. Do you think mm. it's like a thing where sometimes humans lie out of compassion? I don't know. I feel like she's trying to I don't know. Yeah. Downplay, maybe? Like, who's the real evil person in this episode? Because everyone is so unlikable. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So who's... Because I think if she didn't cheat, she's like the protagonist. He's the anti-hero, or he's the villain. But because she did cheat, it's very complicated. Yeah, I think she's evil, but then he kind of dug his own grave, too. Yeah. Like, he could have chose either just break up with her and move on but instead he let this consume him yeah i think once you find out that jonas has that memory of her cheating you just break up why would you need to re-watch that yeah from her perspective and see the whole thing go down yeah. like that is some level of sick trauma and yeah. do you think that says something about people see but then i feel like it's gonna probably gonna come true very soon right with all these yeah. like wearables vrs it and reminded Neuralink. me so much of the apple vr headset like yeah. just the hologram the way and then in the apple commercial they're like showing the pictures and videos mm -hmm. in a hologram format mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be this like cute little moment where the father reminisces about the family videos yeah. and this gave me such strong like ah 
uh, it's just uh, such a in, invasive uh, tech. Yeah, it's your there's zero privacy at that point. Yeah, like I think as a couple, like sometimes we're already so you know close to each other. Like if you have to know everything or you have the option to know everything. Yeah. That's just too much. Wait, I want to know everything suddenly. Wait, <laughs> what don't I know? What do no, I not I, know? <laughs> you do know, but I'm just saying, like, it's a lot, you know? <laughs> and we're heading towards that. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts. And would you get a grain? And would you go through your partner's grain? Oh, my God. It's like a new version of going through someone's phone. <gasps> Stress. But, uh... Love you guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>